friend I ran into at the gym, a uh, really great long long time friend. Uh, and we were just talking like for a minute and we were talking about that because we were talking about how like with a lot of your multicultural churches, a lot of your new age churches, um, they don't mm. have no deliverance ministries at all. Mm. Um, you'll see an influx of people um, that's carrying things like, you know, that have demons and, you know, possessions mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But we don't have, I would say that ministry is really like dead at those churches. I can't speak for all of them in general because mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't been there. But speaking to them and then different ones that I know that, that kind of try to shy away from it, they just yeah. would rather just, <laughs> we just want to worship and <laughs> preach and that's it. Like, you don't want to deal with that. <laughs> Deliverance ministry, I just start thinking of, first off, I mean, I could go through, not church fails, not that I celebrate this stuff either, even though my mom's like, stop being so sacrilegious, but I'm kind of like, mom, it's either laugh or cry. Mm. It's like, either you laugh at how ridiculous this is. <laughs> or cry. Or you cry at how far and depraved we've gotten yeah. from the real thing, right? Yeah. So I think about it like this. Um Deliverance ministry, where does it get its biblical roots and origin? Mm -hmm. Where do we get mandate? Mm -hmm. Where do we see anything that we could glean some sort of instruction on how we should do it or how we should look to do it? Is it something we should seek or is it just something we should have in the tool? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like in our repertoire, in your repertoire for like moments where because it's real. Spiritual warfare is real. It's real. Yeah, it's real. You're going to run into people and no, they're not just ADHD. No, they're not just depressed. Mm-hmm. No, no, they're not. They're bipolar. not yeah, bipolar. no, they're not. You know, all these clinical things that we try to like shy it away with mm-hmm. because we want to just, you know, put them in the special needs class, if you will, and then continue <laughs> to go on with worship. <laughs> well, I'm, it's, it's real. <laughs> it's just put them, like. Put them in the buddy system. <laughs> I mean, that's what, we, that's what we think we're doing. Like, we're just like, oh, well, they just have issues. I had a real, I got a story. I got, I got a story about this one. Um, <laughs> had a real incident where this dude came to the church and was trying to get plugged into the ministry. And he was just talking a lot. And it seemed harmless at first. Mm-hmm. But it's like the more you would talk, the more you would start to pick up red flag, red flag, red flag. Yeah. And it could have been dismissed as just, oh, well, he said he, he said, I think I'm on the spectrum. Mm. or something like that. You know, he would just, like, give credit. It's almost like he would give credit to something like that. Before, yeah. Yeah, like, he would just say stuff like that, and and it would make it easier to be like, okay, so buddy's like this because whatever. But the more he kept talking, and the more we got to know him, Mm. the more problematic he started to become. Mm. And then I started, like, I started investigating a little bit more from people who knew him outside of the church. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, this sounds demonic. Mm. Like I'm saying like voice notes. Yeah. Text messages. Yeah. You know, things that were said. Yeah. Aggression. Yeah. Like very aggressive, especially when it comes around things like Jesus being the son of God. Mm-hmm. And I started, I was like, hold on, wait a second. Did it, <laughs> didn't it say, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, Honestly, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I'm not. I don't think we're supposed to go around being like uh, spiritual doctors yeah. either. You know, like saying like, "Oh, I, I pronounce thee <coughs> demon possessed." <laughs> you know, <laughs> I pronounce thee demon possessed. I'm not supposed to die over here and get, spo- get delivered, right? I'm not supposed to necessarily diagnose you, but some of the stuff I was just like, "All right, this sounds more than behavioral. This sounds like deep spiritual." Yeah. Like he was saying stuff that was like. Honestly, it was very heretical, yeah. you know, to the Bible. Yeah. And he was he was used to people being confrontational with him about it. So when we responded calmly, I noticed his demeanor would change. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just picking up little cues like that where mm-hmm. it's like okay, something here is is going on. And could it have been mental maybe? Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm not downplaying that, but I also don't want to downplay the spiritual side of what yeah. could have been happening in this situation too. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why we 
say we look at the Bible and we're like, yeah, there's the demoniac, there's mm -hmm. Mary who had demons in her before Jesus delivered her, there's this person with a demon, who's this child with a demon throwing them into a fire. I mean, our kids throw themselves on the floor all the time. Not my yeah. kids personally, I'm just saying in general, in yeah. our society, our kids throw themselves on the floor and mm -hmm. pitch a fit, yeah. and we don't say... You know, get out of it. We say, get up. Get up. I'm going to get the belt. <laughs> I'm going to drive it out of you. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, I think we're desensitized to it. Yeah. Basically what I'm saying. I think we're desensitized to it. And because we're, we're not sure of mm -hmm. where it comes from, what we should do, how we should handle, who is this for. Mm -hmm. You got the two different sides. You got the one side of the church that doesn't want to acknowledge it at all. Mm -hmm. And kind of everything is awesome. That's why I call them. Everything is awesome, church. Everything is awesome. You know, if there's any problems, you try to get, sh 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 you know, right. put it in the corner quietly. Let's deal with it quietly. Mm -hmm. In love. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> nah, we're never going to see that mug again. Ever. <laughs> like, it's almost like the church <laughs> mafia. <laughs> I'm like, they, they take them off into the dark. <laughs> Where are taking, the them, taking them out behind the, behind right. the church. Where's the ushers taking them? <laughs> you know, throwing um, them out the church like uh, like jazz on Fresh Prince. <laughs> <Smash. laughs> oh man! And then the other side, <laughs> the other side. See, we try to go deep. It's 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 it's, it's me. It's you. It is you. I just want to go me. on record. No, it's, it's both of us. <laughs> the other side is the ones who see a demon in everything, mm. and they're like hyper, hyper about it. Yeah. And it makes the people in and the middle really kind like, I don't want to deal with this at all. Yeah. Not everything can be a demon. Mm -hmm. But not everything is not a demon. Yeah. So what do you do about What's deliverance? What's the fine line between, like, demon possession and mental health? Like, that Ooh. actual mental health issue. If somebody has an answer for that, go ahead and put it in the comments or <laughs> send us a message. Because I'm not going to pretend to answer that. You're right. Like. I think that's, a, that's such a hard thing to, like, discern. It is. Because, like. Yes, we, we know how to discern Satan and his attacks and how he, you know, possesses things. Somewhat. And then and then and then there's even a greater debate about, you know, whether or not, you know, Christians can be demon possessed or, or, or can, oppressed. Right. Well oppressed. Mm -hmm. That's an even larger discussion. Mm -hmm. Um I actually think that they can. Um and I'm sure I've seen it. And <laughs> before we dig ourselves into any more trouble, but, we can get responses and viewpoints from both sides. Right. We're not saying who's right, right who's wrong. It's yeah. just, it's it's just, just this is just speak. my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I I've seen firsthand Christians be demon possessed and or oppressed. How you yeah. how you want to slice it? That some, they were, some they had a demonic on. spirit in them Something and they had to be cast out. Was going on. Right. And then I, on the other side, I've had. So seen, were they really saved? That's the other side of it. it was like, were were they really saved? Then I'm like. How do you know if someone's yeah. really saved? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it can get real, and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it is something the Bible study deeper or further. I'm just going off of what I have. I mean, but most people you know. they'll they'll go off of you know looking at scripture. You know, mm -hmm. once you're in Christ, you're a new creature. All things mm -hmm. pass away. Behold, all things are new. You know, you're a holy being. You know, you have the Holy Spirit in you, so the Holy Spirit and sin does not mix or anything. But, I mean, it's like, that can be kind of convoluted because of the same fact that, you know, even if, like, a man looks on a woman mm -hmm. and lusts on her, like, in that, you sin. You've already committed adultery in your right, heart. Right. So, there's sin there, yeah. but, you know, but, mm -hmm. okay, so, being demon possessed, like, it's the same, and, you know, and there's Christian men that deal with that stuff, too, you know, and so, I mean, and that's why I was like, you know, we can't sit here and be like, oh, well, were they really saved or not? I mean, I don't think it should be about stone that's throw. La right. That's exactly. Yeah. Cuz that's like that's layering things and throwing stones and it's just it's not it's not Yeah. It's not a beneficial conversation. You're almost trying to weed yourself out from someone right. else. Right. Right. I mean, essentially, you just if you're following Christ, then you're naturally weeding yourself out from all the nonsense anyway. Right. Whether it's to the scale of what you're talking about like if a man looks upon a woman I mean, the, the verse says if your right eye causes you to sin. Right. Pluck it out. <laughs> so how come a whole bunch of y'all still got two eyeballs? You know what I'm saying? Like, if we're going to go all, all the right. way funky, then go all the way funky with the whole text. Right. It's like. But that's when context and all that other stuff comes into play mm -hmm. because that's the metaphor mm -hmm. and all these different things. So that's where but it's just like, you. I think if you focus your attention on not so much on, hey, I'm not with these people mm -hmm. or they're not really with us. I mean, you don't really have to do that too hard. People will weed themselves out. Yeah. Jesus showed us that. Yeah. I, and I honestly believe that with, like, demon possession and between demon possession and mental health fight. Mm -hmm. Because there are times when, like, you you, you know that there there's somebody that really has, you know, 
they really are, you know, mentally struggling with things. Mm. But then there's times when you can spiritually discern, like something's not right spiritually. Mm. And this this is kind of how I how I can distinguish the difference. Mm. If a person walks in and their presence shifts the room, mm. to me, that's a demonic spirit. In a negative way. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, in a negative way. Like uh-huh, if, uh-huh. talking about demon possession. Like if they walk into a room or walk into a setting and it shifts the atmosphere, mm-hmm. to me, that's a demonic. You know, conservative people and Baptist people, we don't believe in atmosphere shifting. But it happens. I, I mean, know, I, I, know, I, I know. mean, I'm picking. But dude, like literally, I grew up, what? I said this on in my, in one of the posts that's on, on out there. I, I grew up holiness, Baptist, Pentecostal. But totally black Baptist is different than white Baptist. I found that it's out the hard way. Totally different. It's, it is different. Completely different. It's different. It's just like, never mind. But Night and day. Lights on, lights off. <laughs> lights on, lights off. It's light and it's completely different. It's different. But I will say, like, even, like, in, like, the, the Baptist church that I grew up in, we didn't mm-hmm. we didn't talk about or deal with demonic possessions and things like that. I didn't deal with all that stuff or talk about or talk about those things until, you know, I started going to a Pentecostal church. Same. And so it's like, that's when I started seeing on that scale. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started seeing deliverances happen. Now, the first, <laughs> the first, I won't say it, <laughs> for lack of better terms, the first exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> Not the last one. <laughs> the first one. The first one. The first one, I would say the first oh experience I've had with that, was I was a kid. I had to be like maybe like eight, nine, like maybe like around my kids' age now. Um, we were at a family member's house, um, mm-hmm. and this family member was, you know, was demon possessed. Like, mm-hmm. and so, and it was like a family gathering. I can't remember exactly why we were all there, but what I do remember was they told all the kids, <laughs> they put us all in the room in the back room. It was like mm-hmm. in somebody's bedroom. Like y'all stay here. We gonna deal with this. Me being nosy, <laughs> I escaped the room. You know, as curious there's kids, all, there's do, always you know, one kid. As, that's, yeah, you know, as curious black mm-hmm. kids do. You mm-hmm. know, <laughs> you know, because I hear a lot of screaming and cussing and throwing things and mm-hmm. objects, throwing stuff and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And so I'm like, mm, what's going on out here? <laughs> so I'm peeking around the corner. I see that my cousin is, you know, going through some things and I'm like, okay. <laughs> 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 My cousin's just going through some Go, things, going you through know. Some things. They just had a hard day. Just had a, just had a terrible day. <laughs> <Terrible God>. day. <laughs> so casual. <laughs> so casual. You know, just, just going through some just things. Going through you know. some stuff. Nothing to see here, folks. Just Nothing to see here, folks. Demon just, possession. Just demon possession. And so, and then, like, and then I, I heard her when she threw up, and then I heard, mm-hmm. um, like, them praying over her, too. And so it was like, when, when that happened, I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then that the whole room shifted when she was done yeah and so that's why i say like when the room shifts yeah that's how i i to me that's how i feel like you know demon possession because like everything shifted because at one time like we were all together everybody was happy mm-hmm. and then she said something left and the next thing you know it was like everything shifted mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it was mm-hmm. like get to the back Hide the babies, <laughs> hide your kids, hide your wives, hide your husbands. <laughs> stop, stop. I'm sorry, y'all see where my mind goes. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it was like, you know, just take the babies in the back. And I and I mm-hmm. just remember that vividly because that's what happened. And then, like, after that, but we were going to a Baptist church at the time. And so all mm-hmm. of this stuff was new to me. So I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, this is weird and this is different. Because when I was at a, when I grew up holiness, when I went to holiness church, I went there to maybe I was like maybe five or six. Mm-hmm. So I don't really remember much. My <laughs> my earliest memory yeah. of being at that church was, no, I know they shouted a lot, a lot. L- Liters in church, literal all shouting, day. like shouting, like shouting, but also screaming and dancing. Yes, and all. yes, I was and making there was, sure there was for all viewers mm-hmm. and listeners. Most most of my, shouting. Most of my viewers are. You know, black. We're trying to player. expand a little bit. <laughs> trying to expand. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I bring. Uh, uh, I, I bring. I bring. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> you, bring, you, you bring the multiculturals and the multi ethnicities. I do too. You know, you know uh, some, somewhat, somewhat. Uh, <laughs> I bring the crazies. <laughs> when we, when we started talking about Trump. Are we? <laughs> 
followers went up. <laughs> Views went up. <laughs> I'm playing. Um, but no, I mean, that was, and then, like, yeah. even with, like, my mom, like, I, <laughs> she was shouting, and then she the, was drunk in the spirit, or she was slain in the spirit, and I just remember being a kid, I was taking a nap in the middle of all of this. It's amazing mm. kids could just nap. Amen. But I was knocked out, and then I just woke up, and I saw my mom on the floor, and I thought she was dead, so I started crying. <laughs> there is so much, man, bro. Can, you know, I actually feel like I we feel, should talk I feel about for, black church dra- trauma, trauma, <laughs> facts. Maybe there should be a new podcast, black church trauma. <laughs> There's so much you see as a kid in church, and you're like. What is happening here? I just this I, doesn't I, happen I, at school. I feel you this, this so at much. Timmy's church. Like, what? <laughs> this happened at Timmy's church. <laughs> you done? Like, oh why is this happening gosh. here? What is going on, bro? That's so true, though. We don't think about how this stuff affects the kids. <laughs> the kids don't got no doctrine. <laughs> None. They don't know what's going on. None. They don't know that you're just you're candy. honoring and glorying the God, uh, right. or you know, giving honor and glory to God. Like, right. they just said, "Oh my Lord, <laughs> oh my Mama God. Dad, Mama Dad, <laughs> Mama Go, Mama Go, Mama, Mama Go." Uh, right. <laughs> Tears streaming down my face, <laughs> and then somebody got the nerve to come over and try to comfort to you. you. Yeah, right. some stranger. Right. Like you ain't learned right. stranger right. danger. Right. Like I don't know you. I don't know you, what old lady. Yeah. <laughs> But in church, it's perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal. That's, man, I could get into a whole thing, man, where I'm just like, I, I would love to blow the roof off some of the norms. Yeah. Because, again, it goes back to, like, I'm going to pull it all the way back to the original <laughs> top. I'm going to try to pull this back together. There's a lot there, so we, we, we might have to, I feel like we're always doing this. We're going to have to part two this. Yeah, we're going to do part another two episode. Yeah, episode yeah. Do another episode. Do a series. All right. Do a whole right. series. And three months later, the series oh, never comes. Facts. Um, <laughs> I felt that, <laughs> um, but like it wasn't a shot at you. <laughs> it kind of goes back it to what was. I was saying. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Go ahead. It goes back to like deliverance ministry in general, where it's mm-hmm. just like, okay, cool. Where do we get it from? It's mm-hmm. normative in some church cultures, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. norm. And what I mean by norm, it means like it's gonna happen. Yeah. This happens. Um. We're not going to question it when it happens, as a child especially. Mm-hmm. That's what I love about the examples you brought up. You didn't bring it up as somebody with a biased worldview. You're like saying, I'm recounting things that, that I saw. That has happened to I me happened. personally. Yeah, right. as a child where right. it's like I'm not imposing this. I'm not imagining this. I'm not manipulating this to fit a certain narrative. <laughs> I experienced narrative. this. I experienced <laughs> right. I survived. <laughs> is what survived it sounded like. You said, you said, I survived. <laughs> I survived. <laughs> but like. Honestly, like all the stuff that you described, even from a child's perspective, I, I think it may even better that you were a child because so much of this stuff gets cloudy mm-hmm. when people try to fake it. Oh, yeah. And as an adult, you get put on guard all the mm-hmm. time where you're like, oh, what's real? What's not? What's the da 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 da? What are we supposed to do? All day. So it's like when you say, hey, no, nah, there was no cameras around. <laughs> this was a family event, probably yeah. at your grandma's house or yeah. something. Yeah. And they had to lay hands on your cousin. Yeah. Who was wilding out. And then you talked about laying hands, throwing water and everything. You know, just they, they were trying to they probably didn't know what they were doing either. They might not admit that. Mm-hmm. But they probably didn't know what they were doing either. They just knew we need to do of them something. Yeah. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah, Even if it's saying. like you know what you're doing mm-hmm. until it happens. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I'm a pro. Let me get the cross out and the garlic and you know what I'm saying? No, yeah. bro. Like you, they're caught off guard just as much as anybody, and they're like, "That's all." I, they're just saying Jesus, yeah, because they're like, "Well, that's the name that works. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the name that demons tremble on." Yeah. We we see this in the Bible, but that's honestly, but that's like speaking to that point. Like that's where we do see like demon mm-hmm. possessions and casting of, out of demons, right? In the New Testament, mm-hmm. you don't really see that in the Old Testament at all. Like uh, when Jesus come on the scene and he's doing that. That's when you really see. That stuff. I mean, it makes you kind of wonder, though, because it's like going back to Genesis where it talks about the sons of God. And I could get into mm. a whole thing. But you know what verse I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, read your Bible or ask for help or clarity. Don't the just sons of God, don't Nephilim. don't YouTube or TikTok this type of stuff either. If you have questions, just ask. 
for real. But there's a verse that talks about the sons of God, mm-hmm. i.e. demons, mm-hmm. or a.k.a. demons, fallen, um, angels. fallen angels, mating with the sons uh, or the daughters, the daughters of, man. of man. And I'm thinking to myself, that's probably the first instance of demon possession mm-hmm. in the history of the world. Mm-hmm. And it's a weird way to think about it, but I'm just kind of like, what else could this? And they reproduced. Yeah. Like, this is wild. Yeah. But to your point, it's like we don't see a whole lot of this stuff happening. But culturally, we know it was happening because the priests were the ones who usually would have to deal with all Do sorts it, yeah. of, you know, if you were an outcast, if you were unclean, this isn't just demon possession. This is leprosy. This is sickness. This is lameness. You know, mm-hmm. it was almost like you had to be filtered through the priest to figure out if you could stay within the community. Yeah. Yeah. Or not, because yeah. if you weren't allowed to stay in the community, it's because they thought you were unholy. Yeah. You were unclean. Yeah. And you would contaminate everything. So now, you know, now we can't go and make sacrifices and mm-hmm. God's not hearing our prayer and now we're in <laughs> captivity. You know, like they're right. super proactive again <laughs> in a way, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's like you're right. Until Jesus' ministry, we really don't see this whole like there's a demon speaking. Mm-hmm. To Jesus saying, "Hey yo, what you doing here? Mm-hmm. It's it's not time. Is it time? Is yeah. it whoa, 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 time out? I know who you are." Mm-hmm. And Jesus says, "Shut up." Mm-hmm. Like the behavior could have been happening before Jesus began, began his ministry, yeah. but the dialogue mm-hmm. is different. Yeah, that's why we even know about it because of Jesus. So, what am I saying? There's, I think, for one. We need a great sense of caution and discernment with not just how we deal with subjects such as demon possession, things of the spiritual nature, um, spiritual warfare. But I also think we need a greater deal of discernment with how we choose to go about, I'm going to use this term lightly, but glorifying it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're almost glor- that's honestly probably my only hesitation. And I got friends, people I know and love who are into uh, or have been part of, you know, deliverance ministries. I've mm-hmm. seen mo- ministries and movements where, mm-hmm. um, you know, they have deliverance ministry. I think honestly, I think one thing that's going to change the hood would it's be yeah, the, yeah. a lot of these people need deliverance. Yeah, um, they need deliverance. They need 12 steps. They yeah. need, you know, they also mm-hmm. need some some better this and that and that practical things, too. Mm-hmm. Yes. But there's a lot of dark spiritual stuff that happens in these environments in these other countries as well. They talk about this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I feel like all the stories I hear, especially outside of the Western context, we're the only people who go around hunting for demons. Mm. Yeah. And calling it deliverance ministry platforming it if it happens at church all of a sudden there's a camera in the person's Mm. face so we can capture this moment yeah i don't know how to feel about some of that stuff yeah i believe it's real i've i experienced some similar stuff like as a child i remember being at um a very big church in new Mm -hmm. york to the point where it's like it was big to the point where you had a balcony and we were Mm -hmm. sitting in the balcony area Mm -hmm. during an altar call end of the church, you know, where people coming forward for prayer, this and that, you just heard someone down there scream. Yeah. Like, it was something out of the blue. Yeah. It wasn't a regular, it wasn't, it wasn't, a, regular, it wasn't a hallelujah scream. Nah. It was, it it was, was one of those. I'm, I'm up in the balcony. <laughs> I'm about to fall over the balcony yeah. trying to see what's going on. I can't see what's going on, but because mm. the pastor's mic is on, I can hear what's can going hear. on. Yeah. And the screen goes off and the pastor recognizes it and he, he says, he said, come out of her. Mm-hmm. And he like comes down off stage and, and they start praying over her. Like not anything crazy. They just pray. And then the audience, the congregation starts to, <laughs> I shouldn't even say audience. That sounds bad. Like yeah. we just watching a spectator sport. Yeah. But the congregation, the people who realize what was happening, they start praying. Yeah. So now the whole place is getting loud with prayer. Mm-hmm. Just like, I know what that woman sounded like, even though I never saw her. Mm-hmm. I heard something that didn't make sense to me as a child. Yeah. But then I also remember when the praying quieted down Mm -hmm. and things quieted, hearing a weeping voice saying, thank you, Jesus. Mm. And Mm. it's the same woman. Yeah. 
So I'm just like, okay, there is clearly a before and after yeah. that just happened here. And I'm a kid. Yeah. Trying to figure out what just happened. Mm-hmm. And we what not going to talk about this at lunch You're or right. something. Like, You're this right. is just normal for us, right? <laughs> just you sitting know? there holding your Bible like, why am I doing <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here like I wanted to run. I was that right. type of kid, bro. When things got tense, oh, yeah. I'm like, I wanted to run. To run. All right, I'm I out. To get out of the room. I'm out. Like, this, this, this is weird. Yeah. So I don't deny the existence of it. What I do question is the commercialization of it. Yeah. And I think deliverance ministry, I think deliverance is a part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we've created a separate department for it, if you will. I just don't know how I feel about it. And that's probably going to rub, rub some people wrong, but I'm just I mean, honest. no, I mean, that's to me, that's the dangerous part of commercial, com, how do you say it? Commercial. Commercialization. Yeah, I'm just. No, I, I, I didn't know if I said Commercialization. Right. That's, that's, to me, that's like the, the most terrible part about putting it on the camera because I'm, I'm old school. I'm very old school. That demon has to go somewhere. And so by watching TV or you watching mm. on the TV and you're tuning in and you see it and they put it on the screen and like, oh, snap. If your soul ain't right and you watching it, that demon can come into you. Like mm. even you don't even have to be there physically and the demon can still manifest into you. I, like, I mean, that's that's it, true too. like even watching say, TV. I was like, about to say for people who think that's a reach, it's, it's, it's true not a reach. of watching TV and watching, watching certain scary movies and watching certain things yeah. like and, and being able to you have to have you it have affects to have your to, mind. It affects your mind tremendously. It influences you. It's the next topic. But I mean, we ain't gonna get there yet. But at the same time, <laughs> but it's the truth. Yeah, because it's like, you know, I. I, now, I've personally, I have, um, how can I say this? I don't, I have not performed an exorcism. That's, that's, have you cast it something has, out I of? have cast, cast it out. <laughs> stop, stop playing with that. I have, I have done that. I didn't know I was going to say, like, we're not going to call it an exorcism. Right, okay, what did you stupid. do? I did cast a demon out of somebody. Be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. I, I, I did cast a demon out of somebody. Um, mm. And this was in college. Um, and oh, wow. which was insane because what happened was we were, we had a Bible study, um, mm-hmm. and we were actually <laughs> talking about demon possessions and things like that. And so and people were talking about, um, you know, sleep paralysis, mm-hmm. um, cause that's a, a form of demon possessions and things like that. We'll get into that in a second. Um, and they were talking about, um, you know, seeing things, you know, crawling on the walls and. Flying around. Flying around in the room, feeling something different in their room and things like that. Um, and we were talking about that in the Bible study. So when the Bible study was over, we prayed, ate some pizza, <laughs> dipped. Um, everybody went back to their dorm room. I get a call <laughs> at like, mm. like an hour later. I get a phone call from uh, one of the young ladies um, that was at the Bible study. She was like, hey, can you meet? Me and my roommate in the student union. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, what's 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 wrong? She <laughs> was like, she's scared to go to her room. She went to her room and she touched the doorknob. The doorknob was was burning hot. I was like, hmm, that's different. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so she was like, I don't know what to do. I just felt you know led to, to call you, so I mm-hmm. called you. So I said, all right, y'all stay there. She, she was like, yeah, because we about to walk around campus at t- ten o'clock at night. Two young ladies like we about to walk around campus and until you know she feels better. I was like, don't do that because <laughs> school is literally in the middle of the hood. <laughs> don't do that. I'm that coming. Part. Just just wait. And so I get there and like she's on the phone. She's talking to her mom and um, her mom is praying and all that stuff. And so I sit down, I talk to the young lady. And I'm like, yo, what's, what's going on? She was like, I just I can't go to my room. It's like. When I touched the door, the doorknob is like really hot. Um, I was like, "All right, well, let's go. <laughs> mm. Let's go. Let's see." So he's like, "I don't believe you." Let's right, go right, you. right. I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, so I go. We we all go to the um, dorm to, to the dorm room. Um, so as we're approaching the hallway, this is the crazy part. As we're approaching the hallway, she starts to tremble in fear, and she's like, "I can't. I can't go down the hall." And it's and it's and it's to make it to set the scene even more scary. Like the lights were off on the hallway, so it was like what time it was dark school dorm. It was dark, scary movie, long hallway, 
And so and she Don't you just, open that door. Right. And so, <laughs> don't open the door. Right. Don't go in there. <laughs> don't, don't open that door. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, for real. Don't, don't go in the closet. <laughs> I'm like, that's what we see. But we need to stop watching that stuff. You got to stop watching. You got to stop watching, watching these things. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's so real. Because I don't know how in the world it happened to her, how she was possessed or how things happened. So to is her. that what was happening? Yeah. So, like, because wow. what happened was, you know, I walked down the hall. I ain't scared of nothing. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Six foot two black kid from Durham. I ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> right. I dealt with worse. Right. <laughs> so stupid. Deal with worse. <laughs> Had to walk through the hood to go to school. <laughs> Up the hill. Which is both true. ways. Which is fast. Right. In the, the snow. In the snow. In the rain. Just, just to get to the YMCA. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so mm-hmm. we get to the room. And I, after like having to like literally force her to get down this hallway, mm. um, I had her put her hand on the doorknob, and she's like, "No, she couldn't do it." So she like she as she went to touch it, she snapped back. Mm. And so I was like, "This is weird." So I just I touched the door. It was like the door was fine. And so it was like, "All right." So it was like, "Well, give me the key. We'll walk in." Mm. <laughs> and so open the door, walk in, um, and then she just like just freaks out and cries like she's just going through it. Um, and so, I didn't know what to do at all. Like, mm. this is, like, my very first time dealing with stuff like this. I don't know what to do. And so, and I, the only thing I remember is, like, the Holy Spirit literally, like, guiding me, telling me what to do. Mm. Open that window, play some music, do this, do that. And that's exactly what I was doing. I told my other friend that was there. It was like, open the window, give me some water, give me some oil, give me something. Start playing gospel music. Let's set this atmosphere and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So we started praying. She started, um, my other friend, um, she started praying. Mm-hmm. And then the other girl, she was sitting there. She was just, like, freaking out. She was sweating. She was, like, red at this point. Mm-hmm. Light skin. She's just full on red and just sweating and crying. <clears throat> and so I just start, you know, praying. And then I just heard the Lord say, just tell her to say Jesus. So I had her lift her hands. So I like, lift your hands up. Mm-hmm. And so I just started Anointing her hands with mm. the water. It was like, say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. So she's, she's saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. She's doing that. And as she's saying that, I could tell, like, you know, she's she's, she's fighting trying to say Jesus. Mm. She's trying. She's fighting it. And so I just kept praying. The next thing you know, I was, uh, um, as I was praying, I went to go touch her stomach. Mm. I probably got, I, I didn't really touch her stomach. Mm. I got my finger, like, really close to her stomach and she threw up. Mm. <laughs> she threw up and then she passed out. <clears throat> and then when that happened, I was like, all right, the demon left the room because I had the door open. We had the window open. We closed the door, all this other stuff. And like and the demon came out through the throw up and all that stuff. And everything was out. Um, and I told him, I was like, take that, clean that up. Because she threw up in the back. Like, take that out. <laughs> 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 I don't even want it in the door. Take it out. Take, take it, it all to the way the other side out, right, of take campus. Take it out and dump it in the dumpster. And like, That's and um, wild. and then she got up and then she started. You know, she was cool. She was she was like, and she was really she, you know, praying with us and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And she was fine afterwards. And so I was like, man, that was my first. That was like my first time doing that. And I was mm-hmm. like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anything like that. Yeah. But it was like the Lord was leading me through that. The Holy Spirit was leading me through that yeah. on how to do all those things. Because, mind you, like, I've never, I've seen it done in in, in the church setting. I've mm-hmm. never seen by it done. By the professionals. Yeah, know, by like, the pastors yeah, yeah. and the leaders. And I say professionals, I've never like, seen, you know, yeah. people who know, who <laughs> seem right. act like they know what they're know doing. Know the word, yeah, know what yeah, they're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. And, like, here's this, you know, little 17, 18-year-old kid, don't know nothing. Um, mm. And, like, and I'm just sitting here, like, you know, the Lord really leading me through it. And uh, and when it's all said and done, uh, my friend, she was saying that her mom, she just couldn't stop crying because she was like, her mom, not the one that was demon possessed, the other one. She was like, her mom was telling her, it was like, a source of power is coming to help you. A source of power is coming to help you. And then all this stuff happens. And I talked to her mom. She was like, you're the source of power. You the one that did it. I was like, girl, I don't know. I'm just, just the Lord Jesus Christ doing his thing. I'm mm-hmm, just, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. And so it was like, ever since then, it was like, I started seeing Things in a different light. I've been Kojic ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Running for God and never going back. <laughs> never going back. 
<laughs> that's crazy, bro. But I mean, but that's that's, wild. that's that's that was that experience. And it's like it's really and dope though then, yeah. to experience that, especially so young. Yeah, I mean, and it was know? it was wild because after experiencing it, I mean, I had um one of the campus pastor he had called me, he was like, Now, you know, and my mom, I had called my mom afterwards and I told her what happened too. Mm-hmm. I actually called my mom first and I told her it was like, yo, this this happened. I don't know what happened, but and she was she started praying over me because she was like, Yeah, Satan's gonna attack you because like you're a call, like you're Marked. Mm. Uh, you got a target on your back now because you're able to do these things and whatnot. And so it was just it was it was weird for a while after that because it was just a lot of different things happening. I feel like black folk be getting excited about stuff like that though. Yeah, like, I mean, like you that just happened. But to and me, instead of looking at your son, it kind of like a <laughs> you probably a little traumatized, right? But she but she was too because like she was definitely. Talking to me from that perspective, for sure. Because she was like, you know, how do you feel? You know, she was like, you marked. Process. They coming for right, you, right. homeboy. And like, then, you right. got a she's bounty on your the head. Other, and then the other yeah. guy, he's saying it too. And so it's just like, God, this is. Just feel like that's a lot at that moment. Lot, right. At that moment, to, that's a lot. It's a lot of process. Mm-hmm. And like just mm-hmm. seeing all of that, and then only seeing it happen in the big church. Now it's happening on a really private, personal setting. Mm-hmm. It's like you know that's different. But you know, at the same time. When I talk, when we talk about deliverance ministries, it's yeah. televising it, things like that. It should be like those moments where it's I don't say it's it's like too intimate, but to where mm-hmm. you know you're able to be with that person, not one, not fully one because you were caring for a person you knew, right? And you and you have the if you if you have and the just, anointing yeah. to do it, it doesn't even have to be someone you know. But what I'm saying is like you weren't. There was no other alternative. There was no alternative motive. Yeah. Yes. No motive behind that. doing it other than, mm-hmm. okay, I see a need. And Holy I don't, Spirit is, I don't know what to do. Guiding me. Yeah. Holy Spirit guide. He's right. literally guiding mm-hmm. me through this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to do what he's telling me to do because I don't want to be out of line. Because if I, I know, I knew enough to know, like, if I'm out of line, if I don't listen to God correctly, mm-hmm. This demon could attack me or anything like that. I right, knew enough. You read, you read that verse right. from, from Acts nineteen. <laughs> I literally just. I li- did I send right. that to you? <laughs> did I send that to you? Uh uh-uh. Oh no! I sent it to a couple people recently. I was reading <laughs> that verse and it talked about that, where it's like they went around. The people were trying to go around cast out demons in the yeah, and the demons na- in the name of the Lord who the Paul serves. Yeah, and like, bro, we can't do this. Mm-hmm. We can't do this. I don't care. Demon possession, deliverance ministry. What you can't do this with an alternative. We can't motive. do this mm-hmm. with an alternative motive. Mm-hmm. We-